Hello, this is Hands-On Continuous Integration and Delivery with Jenkins X and Kubernetes. This is Section 5, Building and Deploying with Kubernetes. In this section, we'll look at application architecture on Kubernetes, using a deployment to create pods, enabling communication with services, exposing services using ingress, using Helm for packaging, and debugging in Kubernetes. Application architecture on Kubernetes. In this video, we'll learn a little bit about Kubernetes. We'll look at Docker and Kubernetes, and we'll look at applications on Kubernetes. If we take a look at our Jenkins X architecture, you can see that we've covered a number of the topics that are in this picture. In this section, we'll be focusing on the Kubernetes piece right in the middle here. This is the platform on which Jenkins X runs its own components, runs builds, and ultimately deploys our applications. So it's important that we understand how Kubernetes works so that we can help to maintain the Jenkins X cluster and also understand how our applications are deployed once they're built. Let's start by learning a little bit about Kubernetes. Kubernetes allows us to orchestrate Docker containers to build scalable and resilient applications. If you remember in the last section, we looked at how our application is built into a Docker image by Jenkins X using Scaffold. But once we have that Docker image, it just contains our application and all of its dependencies. It's ready to run, but we need a place to run it. And Kubernetes provides that. Kubernetes can automatically manage applications that are run from Docker images. They're run in the form of Docker containers. It provides those containers with configuration, storage, networking, and fault tolerance. That includes load balancing, it includes scaling the number of containers that are running. It includes health checks and failover, starting a new container instance when an old one fails. It allows us to easily operate, maintain, and upgrade our applications. It handles rollover of an old application instance to a new instance by just starting up a new container that replaces an old one. So Kubernetes provides a platform that lets us run our application very easily as long as our application is something we can package into a Docker image. And since with Jenkins X, packaging our application into a Docker image is part of the build process, it's very easy then to turn around and deploy it to Kubernetes. Now, in order to understand how our application runs on Kubernetes, we need to understand a little bit about how Kubernetes works. Kubernetes thinks in terms of resources. Each of the blue boxes on this diagram represents an individual resource in Kubernetes. When we communicate with the Kubernetes API server, we tell Kubernetes what resources we want to have available on the cluster and how they should be configured. And then the Kubernetes control services, including the API server, a scheduler, and some others, those are actually responsible for starting containers, configuring networking, configuring storage, and so on. We'll be looking at this diagram and the resources that are on it over the course of this section, so I won't spend too much time on it, but I just want to draw your attention to the two different kinds of arrows. On the left side, you see the blue arrows that represent control. On the right side, you see the green arrows that represent network routing. In Kubernetes, we have different resources that manage the actual starting of the Docker containers themselves, which are the little boxes in green that have a C in them. We have resources that manage those, that scale them, that upgrade them over time. And then separately, we have resources that handle routing network traffic to those containers. And we'll look at both of those over the course of this section. That's probably enough theory to get us started. So I wanted to also look at an example. We're going to deploy a web application called Plone to our Kubernetes cluster. It's a basic 
content management server, but we're just using it as an example web application we can quickly deploy. To do that, we'll create a deployment, a service, and an ingress, and we'll look at the details of those throughout this section. Let's first take a look at how we configure the resources we want the Kubernetes API server to create for us. We jump over to our code editor. You can see we have a YAML file called plone.yaml. And you notice that it has these three dashes in various places throughout this file. These are separators. They serve to allow us to put multiple Kubernetes resources into a single YAML file and manage them all at once with the API server. You'll notice that we identify the kind of Kubernetes resource, in this case, a deployment. We'll look at some more of those details later on. There is one thing that we need to do in order to expose this to the internet so we can see it in our browser. We need to know the external IP address that was created for our Kubernetes cluster when we created it way back in section one. If we jump to the bottom of this file, you'll notice that I've left a space where you can replace the external IP address of your Kubernetes cluster into this file. You'll need to do this before this example will work. In order to get this IP address, we can use the kubectl command. So of course, this is based on setting up the cluster as we described in section one, and it's based on having the kubectl command as we looked at in section two. So you'll need to do both of those things before this demo will work. I'll jump over to the terminal. I'm going to use the kubectl command in order to get that external IP address to paste into the file. So I'm going to ask it to show me a list of existing ingress resources. We'll talk about the ingress more later on. So for right now, I just want you to notice that we have an address column here and that they're all exposed at the same address. This is the external address for this particular Kubernetes cluster. Yours, of course, will be different. I'm going to copy this Kubernetes address of the external IP address to the clipboard, and then I'll be able to paste it in to that code file. We'll jump back over to the editor, and I'll go ahead and paste it in. Now you'll notice that this is part of a longer domain name. We're using Plone to distinguish this particular Kubernetes application from all of the others that are running, including the Jenkins X components. And then at the end, you see the nip.io. This is a service that allows us to turn just an ordinary IP address into a domain name so we can treat it like it's a host name. So we just paste the IP address into the middle. We'll save this off. And now we're ready to actually run our example. We jump back over to the terminal. In order to run this, in order to create these resources in the cluster, I'll use a different kubectl command, which is kubectl apply. I'll then use dash f and pass it the file name. Now the first time that I run this, what apply will do is it will see that these resources don't exist yet and it will create them. Now that they have been created, if I were to run apply again, you can see that because they already exist and because I haven't made any configuration changes, there are no changes to the cluster. So this is a powerful concept that Kubernetes has. It's this idea of idempotence, which means we make any changes that we need to to our resource files, to configuration files. We run kubectl apply. kubectl apply makes only the necessary changes to the cluster, and then the Kubernetes control services in turn, make only the necessary changes to what's actually running in order to match the configuration that we specified. So this ends up being a very nice way to do things. Now that we've created these resources, even if something goes wrong with our cluster, Kubernetes is still going to be working in the background to try to restore this application that we've created, to try to rebuild the containers, try to restart them, try to set up the services again so that our application continues working. Now that we have this created in the cluster, it may take a couple of minutes, depending on how long it takes to pull the Docker image down and start it running. Once that's complete though, we should be able to get access to our application in the browser. Let's start by listing the ingresses again so that we can see we've created a new one. 
As you can see, there's a new entry here for our Plone application. If we were to take this host name, and I'll just copy this to the clipboard, I can use curl to see that the application is out there running. As you can see, it comes back with the web page for this particular application. And if I jump over to the browser, I can actually see the application is up and running. So this hopefully gives you an idea of some of the power of Kubernetes. We were able to take an application that had already been packaged into a Docker container. Um, in this case, it was just deployed to Docker Hub, uploaded to Docker Hub. Because it was an existing Docker image, we could very rapidly build and deploy an application in Kubernetes that runs an instance of this. So Docker provided the image, it provided the collection of the application together with its dependencies, all configured and ready to run. And then Kubernetes provides the platform that runs that application for us and then routes traffic to it from the internet. That concludes our look at application architecture on Kubernetes.